bless you. You are welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for your life. Thank God for God's faithfulness in the life of every one of us. And I thank God for the privilege, you know, for us to be able to, for the privilege for us to be able to gather together in the name of the Lord to learn again at His feet today. And I believe that God has something wonderful for every one of us. And it is my prayer that we shall not miss it in the name of Jesus, that God will give us an understanding spirit and an understanding heart to be able to receive everything that the Lord has for us today in Jesus' name. So once again, God bless you in Jesus' name. Before we continue in what the Lord has for us today, let us close our eyes and have a quick word of prayer together. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to be gathered together in your name today. We have gathered unto you today and not unto any man. And it is our prayer that we are here to learn and to hear from you. Lord, speak to every heart in Jesus' name. Bless every one of us through the power of your word in Jesus' name. And I pray that at the end of this time, at the end of this session, that none of us would ever remain the same again in Jesus' name. This word will lead us right where we are to the glory of the name of God in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer prayer. Blessed be your name, O Lord, for in Jesus' glorious name we pray and we receive the thing today. Amen and amen. Once again, you are welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for your life and thank God for what God has been doing in our life so far. And I believe that God has something wonderful for us this afternoon or this morning or evening, depending on wherever you are watching me from. And I pray that we will not miss it in the name of Jesus. So today, let's go right away into what uh, the Spirit of the Lord have in store for us today. The topic which I'll be considering today says that bitter or blessed. Or in another way, you can say bitter or better. Because due to life experiences, every one of us, since the day we were born, till this point in our life, we've been through one situation or challenges or the other. Or that we all have our different experiences of our life. We are different. Our faces are different. So also, our experiences, whatever we've been through, you'll hear some people's experiences and you begin to wonder. Really, if you're a child of God, God is faithful in the midst of it all. So the point now, or the, 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 the question we are asking ourselves today is that, as a result of what you've been through life, have you, have you become a better person or are you bitter? As a result of life experiences. Is it of the two? Experiences of life can make somebody either to become better, you become wiser, or you become bitter. It depends on how or the perspective we look at things or our manner of approach to life situation. And the question somebody will ask is that how do I know whether I'm becoming bitter or I'm becoming a better or a blessed person? because of what I've been through life. Because like we said, every one of us will have our life experiences. It could be, you know, it could be somebody that you trust, disappoint you. It could be a husband or a wife left you, you know, on, you know, unceremoniously. It could be death of a loved one. It could be failure in a particular, maybe you start a business and you've invested so much. If you borrowed money, a lot of things happen. A friend backstab you, you know, somebody betrayed you that you, you you trusted. You you know, a lot of things happen in life. And the question today is that, as we go through life, as we sojourn through life, due to our day-to-day -day affairs, do we get better? Do we learn through them? Oh, the things we have been through in life does it make us to become better? Or those things did they make us to become a better person? I pray today in the name of Jesus Christ that whosoever. That you are watching this today, maybe consciously or unconsciously, you are becoming bitter. It could be due to old age. Some people, as they grow older, they become bitter. Maybe because your children are no longer there to care for you. Maybe your husband is dead or your wife is dead. You feel lonely. You feel alone. The people you thought, or maybe the children you raised, that you put so much hope that by the time you are old, by the time you are, you know, you are your old age, they will be there for you. They are not there. Or maybe you lost your children. Some things have happened to you. That you never bargained for. That is life for you. Life happening, life experiences, many of these things, there are things that we never saw coming. But in the midst of all this, as children of God, God wants us to become better and not bitter because bitterness is like a cancer. A cancer as a cell, when it enters into the you know into the into the body of a person, it might be it might start so tiny. But if care is not taken, if it's not discovered. Hell enough, it's not discovered quickly, it spreads and it destroyed the body at the end of the day. So if somebody, as, as a person, if you are bitter, whether you recognize it or not, you tend to lose out. That is the truth. The bitterness in you, we only destroy, cannot build, cannot add anything good to you. 
And I pray there's anybody that is watching me today and you're experiencing bitterness as a result of life experiences. I pray that the message of the Lord will point your heart today. The, the peace of God will flow through your heart. That the, you know, the compassion of the Lord will locate you. And God will give you a new hope. You will begin to see new, new, you know, new reason for life. You begin to see life from a different perspective because of what the Lord is about to do in the life of you, somebody today in Jesus' name. So the question here is that, how do I know whether I am bitter or I am a better person or I am a blessed person? What are the traits? What are the attributes? What are the characters? What are the nature of a better person or a blessed person? Or what are the nature of a bitter person? I start with the nature or the attribute that you will see in the life of a bitter person. The person might not deliberately want to be bitter. But because the person, many times, so people, they've been wronged. And they believe that the only way they can feel satisfaction, they can get satisfaction, the only way they can get, you know, peace in their heart is for them to wrong many other people. What are the attributes of a bitter person? What are the things that you will see in the life of somebody that will make you to know that truly this person is bitter? Number one. The person will always be complaining. Yes, that person did this. The other person do that. You will complain and complain and complain about what people do to you. Amen. But you never remember that at one point in time or the other, you too, you must have hurt other people. Yes, every one of us, whether consciously or consciously, you have hurt other people. They will go about complaining about the unpleasant situation we are going through, forgetting that we too will be there. Then instead of us to complain, we can ask for the grace to overcome or the grace to rise above whatever is it that people have done to us. I pray that the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus. So a bitter person always complain. They are resentful. They are hateful. They are revengeful. They are always looking for you know, revenge for whatever people have done to them. They never forget. They are always hungry. They are very unhappy. Nothing can make them happy. You will hardly see smiles on their face. Hurtful. They hurt others. Because they are hurting themselves, they hurt other people. They are unforgiving. They don't forgive other people and they can't even forgive themselves. They, they blame other people. They never take responsibility for their own life and they are aggressive. They are very difficult to get along with. They are aggressive. I pray if anybody is watching and you can see some, some or all these attributes in your life, that means you are bitter. You might be justifying yourself. Uh, 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 yes, you can't understand what I've been through. My dad did this to me when I was young. My mom did this to me, abandoned me. My brother did this, my friend did this to me. This and that, and you have all sorts of story. But if only you can see God in the midst of what people do to you. Because when you look at the story of people in the scripture that went through either the same or far greater than what you went through, and they came out blessed, then it will be able to convince you that God can move in your whole life if you can open up your heart to God. And allow him to put you from every form of bitterness because it will only destroy you. It's like a cancer. It will only kill at the end of the day, if not taken care of. Let's look at the story of people that became bitter in the scripture and see and ask yourself, is this how you want to end your life? I pray that God will give you understanding as you listen to the word of God in Jesus' name. I start from the book of Ruth chapter 1 from verse 3 to 7. This is concerning the woman Naomi, the mother-in-law of Ruth. This is what happened to this woman. And Abelech, I read from verse 3, and Abelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Opera, and the name of the other Ruth, and they dwelt there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and husband. So they went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass. When they came when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, is this not Naomi? They saw the woman. People that knew her said, wow, is this not this woman? Even though she was, she has changed, circumstances have made her to change. Maybe she, she's, she's lost some weight. Maybe she look older because of the pressures and difficulties of life. Is that not Naomi? And she said unto them, call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I pray that anyone that have called themselves Mara, that is bitterness, God will turn your bitterness to sweetness today in Jesus' name. This woman said God has dealt with her. Is it God that killed the children? Is it God that killed the husband? No. But she blamed God for everything she was going through. And she said God had dealt bitterly with her. I went out full and the Lord had brought me home again empty. 
Why did, he, why did he call me Naomi, seeing the Lord that testified against me, and the Lord has afflicted me? I pray everyone that is going through any form of affliction in your life, that the mercy and the comfort of the Lord will locate you today, and you will see the good out of whatever you are going through today in Jesus' name. So this woman, unlike her, her daughter-in-law, she became bitter. She didn't see any reason for life again. She didn't see any, any good that, can, that could ever come out of her life again. She believed that God has forgotten her. And her story was over. Then when she thought her story was over, she didn't know that God has not started with her yet. Because eventually, good came out of her life. And I declare to the life of somebody watching me today that no matter what you have been through, or no matter what you are going through, you think that the end has come. You think that God has forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. And heaven has not forgotten you. You will rise again. And you will see the good out of life. You will see beauty arising out of your heart. She's again in Jesus' name. And also, I see the story of... You know, the family of David, the story of the family of David in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 13. I read from verse 14, 20, 28 to 29. How did he would, he would not hearken unto a voice that is Amnon, Amnon, the son of David? How did he would not hearken unto a voice, but see, being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her? And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, At Amnon, thy brother, been with thee, but how, but hold now. Thy peace, my sister, he is thy brother. We got not this thing. So Tamar, Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house from verse 18. Now Absalom had commanded his servant, saying, even though he pretended to the sister to Tamar that everything was okay, he was at peace. No, it was not at peace. He was revengeful. He was planning the day he's going to kill Amnon for what he did. Some people they can plan for years to take revenge. Somebody did something to you. You can't find a place in your heart to forgive the person. You cannot. And you plan for years, you plan and plan until you carry out your evil heart. You know what? God will punish the evil doer. The person that did it to you and what you two you do, God will punish everyone. So two wrongs will never make it right. Amen. This man decided to kill the brother because though what the brother did was wrong, but he could not find a place in his heart to forgive, even though he pretended as if everything was okay. Verse 28 again. Now Absalom had commanded the servant, saying, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto the smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not, have I not commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. And the servant of Absalom did unto Hamnon as Absalom had commanded them. They did according to the commandment of their master, and they killed Hamnon because Absalom could not forgive. I pray that God will give you a mind, a forgiving spirit, a forgiving heart, so that we'll be able to, you know, get over our hearts. There are some things that are difficult. There are some situations, there are some hurts, there are some offenses that are truly difficult. But we can ask God for healing. We can ask God for the grace to be able to forgive because we must forgive others. But means that if we forgive others not, the trespasses that God in heaven will not forgive us our trespasses. That is the truth. People truly hurt. There are some things that if I, if I, he, he's, he's so abominable, you can't even listen to. Look at this story now. There are some things that you listen and you begin to wonder that how can somebody do this? But if only we can forgive, if only we can allow God to heal us and come out to, you know, to arise above our hurt and our disappointment, we will see our life becoming a source of blessing to other people. Then we can be said that we are not bitter, we are blessed. Because our life now begins to tell others through our own experiences that have been through it. Your life will now become, you know, became, your life become a source of comfort to people that are coming behind you. And I pray that you and I will allow God to walk in our hearts, in our pain, so that our pain now will become a source of blessing to those coming behind us in Jesus' name. So this um, oh, Hapsalom killed the brother eventually, and King David was not pleased. In fact, he had to run away from the father. And I pray that God will help each and every one of us. That will not be said of us in Jesus' name. Amen. These are the attributes that you will see in the life of somebody that is blessed or that is better due to life experiences. You will see the person that the person is always joyous. If your life is full of joy in the midst of challenges, even though you've been through a lot, but still, it can be said of you that truly the joy of the Lord is your strength. That means you are getting better and you are blessed of the Lord. Amen. If you are loving, you are a better person. If you are kind to people, even without being asked, you can liken yourself that you are blessed of the Lord. Amen. If you are forgiving, you easily forgive people. You don't hold things because you know that when you hold forgiveness from people or even from yourself, some people, they are so bad with forgiveness that they can't even forgive themselves because of maybe some things that they've done. They disappointed themselves. They failed themselves or they failed God. 
Even though God might have forgiven them, they defy the difficult to forgive themselves. I pray that the Lord will deliver somebody through the power of his word today in Jesus' name. If you are forgiven, you can say you are blessed of the Lord. Amen. If you are the type that takes responsibility, you look back into your past, you look back into the affairs of your life. Look, there are some things that happen due to life you know, circumstances and due to people that come and go into your life, come to a point in your life that you begin to take responsibility for your life. You are not blaming people. You are not throwing pity party for yourself so that people can come and always come to sympathize and, you know, pity you and all those things. If you are in that situation, you can never experience, you know, the, the blessedness of the Lord. But if you can get to a point in your life that you take responsibility for your life, no matter what has happened and no matter what you have or that is happening around you, you take responsibility that it is my life. And you believe that with, the God, with God on your side, things can get better. Then you can say you are getting better or you're a blessed person. Amen? If you are happy, you're always happy. You are not melancholy. You are a very friendly person. You make more friends than you make more enemies. You are trustworthy. People can rely on you. You are dependable. You can say truly you are blessed of the Lord. No matter if people have you know, betrayed you in the past or people because somebody betrayed them, then they make up their mind that anybody that crosses my path, I will pay them back with the same coin that I was paid. That person is not blessed. And I pray that some God will deliver somebody today from such spirits in Jesus' name. You are very helpful. You help people. And then you are loyal. You're loyal. People can rely on you. People can pour out their hearts to you without them being disappointed at the end of the day because you've not betrayed them. You are a honest person. People can deal with you, close their eyes, you know. They can work with you, close their eyes all day without being afraid. You're a peaceable person. Amen. You are responsible. You will not say you want to do something and the next moment you just take your mind without, you know, unannounced. You're a responsible person. You're a hardworking person. You're a compassionate person. You allow the things you have gone through in the past to be a means of comfort. God allow you know, you allow the comfort of God upon your life to be able to use it also to be able to comfort other people. That means you can say that you are blessed of the Lord because the same comfort you receive from the Lord, you are able to pass it across to others. And you're a very caring person. You don't close your eyes to the plight of other people. You're always there. Even before they ask, you're always there. You turn up even without people asking you for help. You, then you can say you are blessed of the Lord. Amen. So that kind of a person, that doesn't mean that the people that have this kind of heart that they've not been through challenges of life. But one thing is that they have allowed the challenges, they have allowed the experiences to make them, to learn, you, they learn from their life experiences, their past experiences. Whatever it is that they've been through, they allow it. You know, to, to, to let they learn from those things to make them to become a better person. So that as they grow through life, they avoid the past mistakes and how to order their life with the mercy and the help of the Lord as they go into the future. So nobody you see in this life that has not been through one challenges or the other. Nobody you see in this life that does not have his own story. If at times we sit down, we look at our own life and we think that we are the most unfortunate person on earth. But mind you, if you listen to some other people's story, then you will know that God is good to you. If you listen to the story of others, you will be able to say of a truth that the Lord has been good to you. Amen? And if we look at the description, we will see example of people that even though they've been through challenges of life, but they turn out better. They turn out blessed indeed of the Lord because their challenges now became a stepping stone to where God was indeed taking them to. And I pray that the same will be your host testimony and my testimony in the name of Jesus. That challenges of life will not pull us down, will not destroy them, but rather, will not destroy us. But rather, it will take us to our place of destiny. It will take us to our place of glory. And so shall it be said of you and I in Jesus' name. Amen. First, I'm going to, I'm going to look at the story of Rahab. We may not be able to read all of her story, but the story of this lady, Rahab was a prostitute. As a profession, she was a prostitute, professional prostitute. Whatever made this lady to become a prostitute, the Bible did not tell us. It might be a matter of choice. It might be a matter of maybe some people, they say maybe because life is so hard, they can't get a job. Maybe uh, the person that is sponsoring them, if the parents are no longer there, and they cannot get a ready job. 
ready, readily available job. So the next thing they could do is for them to sell themselves for money. Well, it is easy for us to judge people, but God knows the heart of men, and God has the power to save and to deliver. That is not to excuse people that are into this kind of, you know, because your body, the Bible says that, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God purchased you with the blood of the Lamb. So it is never the desire of God for you to, 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 to treat your body, be it a man, because we see them, they are, in, they, they are male prostitutes also. They call them dead gigolo. So whether you're a male or a female, and you find yourself in this kind of situation, this is not the desire of God for you. And the, Christ came to die for you also. And it is my prayer today that as you hear this word, if you find yourself in this category, that the mercy of the Lord will locate you, and the Spirit of God will bring you to the place of conviction, that you will realize that you are not of your own self, that Christ paid for the price of your soul. He paid with his precious blood, and he came to redeem you even also. So this Rahab, if you read from the book of Joshua, from the book of Joshua, we'll see the story of Rahab, Joshua chapter 2. From I read from verse 9, then I read from verse 12 to 14. And she said unto them, unto the men, that is, when the spies, when Moses tell, sent 12 spies to go and spy the land, when God has already promised them that he has given them the land of Canaan, he sent 12 spies to go and spy the place and see, you know, to have, you know, a first-hand information of the land that God has given them. Joshua and Caleb, you know, from the 12 tribes of Israel, they picked people. Joshua and Caleb were the two of them, then the remaining 10 for the remaining two, or ten, or 12 uh, tribe of Israel. These people went, but unfortunately, there was an information. The king of the land got the information that they were spies in the land, and they came after them to arrest them, to capture them. But this prostitute, she has a heart for God. She decided to spare or, or to preserve or to save the people of God. And that is the genesis or that is the story of Rahab. Let's read because we're not going to read from the beginning. If you have your time, please go back to the book of Joshua. If you read from the book of Joshua chapter 2 from the beginning, we will see the story of this lady. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us, that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you may also show kindness unto my father's house. Rahab did not say, you will show me kindness because I'm the one that show you kindness. Rahab extended that gesture, that kind gesture that she's looking for into her, to, to members of her household. He said unto my father or my mother, amen, show kindness that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And that you may save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sister and all that they have. My siblings, all my cousins, the nephews, all my relations, you will save all of them and deliver our lives from death. Can you see the kind of deal that this lady made? Even though Rahab had, she had every reason to be bitter. Because as a prostitute, people must have hated her for it. Some people might have despised her. Even some members of her family must have hated her. They might have deserted her and called her all sorts of names. But this lady did not allow this to make her to become bitter. But rather, she saw an opportunity for her life to be spared, for her life to be saved, for her not to die in her sin and in her destruction. So the salvation now that this lady is asking for, she did not ask him for herself alone, but she asked for every member of her household, everything that is connected to her. She prayed to despise, extend this kindness to them. And she got it. That is to say that circumstance of life, People calling you name, people, you know, doing all sorts of things to you can either make you to become bitter or can make you to become better. Look at your life. People are calling you a particular name. Ask yourself, is it true? Is it true? The name people are calling you, is it true? If it is true, then you ask for grace, for God to deliver you from that unpleasant name because that is not your name. God called you by name. He named you. He said you are chosen. You are beloved of the Lord. Before you were formed, he knew you. So don't allow what you are going through to make you to become a bitter person and look for every opportunity for other people that have wronged you to be wronged, to be destroyed. This lady would have used this opportunity to spare herself and destroy other people, but she didn't. I pray that God will deliver everyone that is watching me today from spirit of bitterness in Jesus' name. And that ye will save our life, my father and my mother and my brethren and my sister and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered that, 
our life for yours. If ye utter not this business, it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that ye that we will deal kindly and truly with it. So they entered into a promise with this lady. And in chapter 6, they fulfilled it. Joshua 6, 25. Rehab and her family were saved. And Joshua saved, and Joshua saved the harlots alive and her father's household and all that she had. Every promise they made, they fulfilled because this lady was kind to her household, to, her mem to members of her family. She was not selfish. And she, do, and she dwells in Israel until this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua spied out of Jericho. So this is a woman that have every reason to be bitter, but she became a better person. She became a blessed person. And I pray that somebody that is watching me today, you are bitter. Maybe you, you are justifiable because of things that have happened to you in life. But the Spirit of God is telling you today that lay down your bitterness at the foot of Jesus and let his blood cleanse your heart all your soul, all your spirit, so that you will begin to experience the blessedness of the Lord. You begin to experience the peace of God. You begin to experience a new life in Christ Jesus. So that the new life you receive will not be able to be a blessing unto other people. And I pray that the Lord will give you the desire to lay it all down at the feet of Jesus in Jesus' name. Another person that we can liken or that we can say that even though life through all sorts of things, Apart that she became blessed, she became a better person instead of a bitter person. It's the story of Ruth. If you see the story of Ruth from the book of chapter Ruth from the book of Ruth, chapter one, from verse 16 to 17. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. This was a promise, or this was you know a declaration that Ruth made, made unto her mother in law. After the experiences they had, Ruth married to Naomi's son, and all of a sudden, the husband died. This the mother in law had been through a lot, and the woman decided, I want to go back to my native land, I want to go back to my father's land. I want to go back to Bethlehem. And this lady, Ruth, and um, Rhoda, the sister-in-law, they decided that they, want, they wanted to go with their mother-in-law. But the mother-in-law said they shouldn't go. Even though they were going, they were grieving, just like this woman also was grieving. The other lady went back, but Ruth decided to stick to this woman. Though she too, she was she's supposed to be bitter because of what a young widow. Somebody might be saying, what have I done wrong? God, why did you do this to me? I have been serving you, I have been doing this. Now, the husband is dead. Somebody, because of that, some people, they never come out of their experiences. They never come out of their sorrow. They never come out of their dis uh, disappointment. Because instead of them to, to seek God in the midst of what they are going through, that God, evil does not come from God, but God has a plan for his children. If you can see the hand of God in everything we are going through, even though God is not responsible for evil that is happening in our world, then believe him. According to the scripture, that God work all things together for good for those that love him and to those that are called according to his purpose. If only we can seek God in our situation, I believe that many of us will learn to become better and to become blessed, to allow the blessedness of God to be our portion, no matter what we are going through in life. This woman, this young lady, Ruth, instead of her to become bitter, angry with herself and angry with God and angry with you know whosoever she become she allowed her life to be a blessing to her mother-in-law and if you look at the book of Ruth Ruth chapter 2 from 17 to 18 so she gleaned in the field until evening and beat out that she had that which she had gleaned and it was about an heifer of barley and she took it up and went into the city and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned and she brought forth and gave to her that she had and she had reserved after she was sophist. That is, Ruth went out to go and cater. She allowed her life to be a blessing to somebody, even though she herself she's going through her own situation. Some of us, because we are going through difficult time, then we don't care about other people. But one thing we forget is that the more we reach out to other people, the more we bless other people, no matter the challenges we are going through, in the midst of all that, ever will not look upon us. That if you are doing this to me, because whatever you are doing to God's people, you are doing it to God. Then God will reach out His own, you know, His hand of mercy unto us in the midst of us taking care of others, even though we too we need care and compassion. This lady herself, she was going through challenges, but she had not her life. She was caring for this old woman. She was working so that this woman can eat, that she will have reserve. 
I feel that God will make our life to be a blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. And concerning the story of Ruth, I read last week from Ruth 4. What is the testimony of Ruth? Ruth 4, from 13 to 15. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception. And she bare a son, and the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which had not left thee this day without the king's man, that his name may be famous in Israel. And it shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thy old age. For thy daughter-in-law, look at the testimony of this blessed lady. For thy daughter-in-law, which knoweth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, are born him. So this testimony of Ruth now became that. Ruth, Ruth now became more. She now, she's been likely to be more than seven sons into this woman. That means, what of if you have children, but they are not able to cater for you. They are not able to do what this lady is doing to you. I pray that God will make our life to be a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. So people can te people testify concerning this lady that truly she was a blessing. And I pray that heaven will testify of your blessedness and my best blessedness. And even the head will acknowledge it. That truly the Lord has blessed you and I in Jesus' name. If you read from the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 50 from verse 20, we will see the story of Joseph. Despite everything that Joseph went through, from the hand of his own brethren, from his brothers, they sold him out. To slavery, they, in fact, the intention was to kill this young man. But eventually, because God had a plan for his life. So no matter what the enemy is doing, God has a plan for you and I. The devil can only try, but all power belongs to Jesus. All power belongs to God. And God they don't have the finance of our life. God had the finance over the life of Joseph. And the same will be said of you and I in Jesus' name. Despite everything that Joseph went through, eventually, let's hear the story or let's listen to the testimony of Joseph. Genesis 50 20. If you want to know all about the story of Joseph, if you are not somebody that is conversant with the Bible, you read back, you know, a few chapters before and you will see the full story. Joseph, Genesis 50 20 says that, but as for you, you taught evil against me. That is the testimony of a blessed person. He said, You plan evil. Then look, look at what the Lord has done. But God made it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. That is, you made evil for my life. Then God turned things around for good. And I pray that will be your testimony. If anybody is watching me today, and people, you can truly say that people have meant evil concerning your life. People meant evil. They've done all sort of evil to destroy, you know, to, to, to eliminate you. Well, no matter what people have done for you, if you can allow God to walk through your heart or through your past, if you can allow God to be God over your situation, then it can be said of you that truly it was meant for evil. All that was meant for evil to you. God turn around for good. And if you're watching me, you want to give your life to Jesus. No matter what you're going to, if you don't allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you will just go through this thing in vain. And people die eventually in their ministry. But I pray that you will not die in your challenges, that God will bring the good out of whatever is it that you and I we are going through. So that at the end of the day, the name of the Lord will be glorified in Jesus' name. So if you're watching me and you want to give your life to Jesus, let's pray this prayer together. Say, Dear Lord, I thank you for dying for my sin. I have prayed that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Please come into my life. Be the Lord of my life and give me the grace to sin no more. Write my name in the book of life and help me to follow you from now till I see you face to face. Thank you for answering my prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, I commit your sons and daughters that have just committed their life unto your feeble hands, Lord. Welcome them into your family. Forgive them their sin. Write their name in the book of life and give them the grace to sin no more. Help them to follow you from now so that in all they go through through life, you will be walking with them. You will carry them. You will see them through that truly. There will be a testimony that in, of, of a truth they've been blessed of you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And every one of us that have watched this today, let's commit ourselves to the hand of God and pray. Say, Father, everything that I've been through since the day I was born, all the hurt, all the disappointment, all the failure, everything, all the things that people have done to me, up to this day, Lord, glorify yourself through it all in Jesus' name. So that of a truth, your word will be fulfilled and you'll work all things together. For good of those that trust in you in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for your sons and daughters that, Father, every past hurt, every past failure, every past disappointment, every past the challenges of life, Lord, prove yourself and make your name glorified over the life of your children in Jesus' name. Let them see the blessedness in everything they've been through in the past in Jesus' name, so that your name will be glorified in the life of everyone. Thank you for the hands of prayer. We see the good of every situation in our life to the glory of your name. Thank you for the hands of prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name, I hope you have been blessed. From today's um, video if you have been blessed like the video comment and share the video be a blessing to somebody and for those that just made their life to jesus i encourage you as the spirit of the lord lead you to find yourself a bible believing church where you can grow in your newfound faith and i encourage you also to join us here regularly as uh, the lord help us so that we'll be able to learn together at the feet of jesus 
So once again, God bless everyone that has been a part of today's video. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. Subscribe and click the notification button, which will help you to be able to know whenever we upload a new video. We do that as the Lord gives us the grace. And I pray that as you join us here, we'll continue to find hope in the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Remember that we love you. May Jesus bless you.